Say 15. Good morning, everybody. I am Katya McLean, president of the board for the San Jose Downtown Association. Welcome to the annual meeting for the year 2020, a year that definitely will be hard to forget. And it's not over yet. We still have three more months. So bear with us. Um, can you, Jessica, can you share your screen? As the managing principal of Steinberg Heart, we are proud to co-sponsor this meeting with, um, next, next slide, with our friends of Urban Catalyst. So thank you, Eric, Josh, Paul, and your entire team for co-hosting uh, the annual meeting with us. Next. And we have missed you. Um, downtown is open. We would like to welcome you back. And if it's either come and join us at the farmer's market next on Fridays at San Pedro Square, we'll be open uh, throughout the year. Um, next, walk around downtown and look at our downtown doors, uh, spring 2020 winners. One of my favorites is the one with the collage with the dog um, that I've seen downtown next. Or dine with us, order takeout. Um, the, they are participating in restaurants and now this year we have opened it to coffee shops to participate in our Down Downtown 2.0 program for 2020. Next. Or watch a movie and open the roof at three below on Second Street in San Carlos. I haven't gone yet, but I look forward you know, to go and open the roof and watch a movie and eat some good food. Next. And we would also invite you to look comment, support the design guidelines for the downtown West proposed by Google. It's a very interesting plan. It's a vision that builds upon the idea of building resilient neighborhoods, next, that capture the essence of San Jose. But what is important to, at least to me, is that, is that it's a place where we will all feel welcome and included, next. They have included housing and not forgetting, you know, affordable housing with 25%, the culture, the arts, education, and a link of parks and open space that connect the entire development in downtown West, and all with an overarching, of course, office space, but all with an overarching idea of zero carbon emissions and a sustainable future. Next. And these health and resilient um, San Jose is driven by starting with the people and our human experience. It is very important that, you know, that they listen to us. We are the ones that will be coming here, hopefully every day. And I like that they, you know, took some cues, you know, from what we have been doing downtown, our active streets, a 10, 20 minute walk city and they were not afraid of being bold and different and propose something that can define the future of San Jose and downtown West. Next. There are many chapters as an architect, you know, I'm probably drawn to, you know, to comment, you know, and provide feedback on a couple of them, but we have a large group, you know, as part of the board and I will encourage, you know, all the board members and the attendees of this annual meeting to participate and respond to each one of these chapters and comment on each one of these chapters uh, that Google has put out. Next. At the end, it's really about an exciting opportunity for all of us to participate in this process, comment, but see a big change in downtown West and in San Jose. Next. We have a full agenda today. Um, I'm calling the meeting to order as the board president. We will go and talk about uh, the state of downtown, um, the PBIT report and financial report. We will have our two minute uh, committee reports, the election of board members, and then we will adjourn at 9.45. A reminder that the chat is open. If you have any comments, please put them on the chat, but we will not be responding live, but, but we will follow up with you if it's necessary, you know, later on. Um, I think that is it for the agenda. And what would I, what I would like to do is introduce Scott Nees, our executive director, to give us the state of the downtown. Scott?
Good morning, everyone. I'm live from the world headquarters of the San Jose Downtown Association near the intersection of First and Santa Clara Streets. Normally, there would be hundreds of us in the church auditorium directly across the street from City Hall. We would have just finished boisterously networking with friends and colleagues and now would be sitting side by side, engaged in city building together. Of course, nothing is normal anymore, including this first ever virtual SJDA annual meeting. Yet, here we are again on the second Friday in October, fiercely participating in our community. We may be on screens and videos and dearly miss our in-person interaction this morning. That does not diminish our dedication, commitment, and vision for making downtown San Jose more vital and livable for all. This year began with such promise and optimism. And today, seven months into COVID, we face a persistent pandemic, economic crisis, and uncertain tomorrow, some are calling the permanent temporary. Downtown San Jose, like urban centers worldwide, has been devastated by the pandemic because we're dependent on people gathering together. A city's liveliness is found in its citizens. How can we sustain our civic energy without workers, residents, students, and visitors in our streets, cafes, and theaters? It can be no surprise half our storefront businesses are shuttered when offices are remote working. The Shark Tank and performance venues, dark. San Jose State University distance learning. Hotels at single digit occupancy. The convention center mothballed and special events, concerts and festivals shut down. The pandemic has halted us from being with each other at the office, the classroom, the bar stool. Downtowns are built for socializing and until people are able to get out together again safely, communities will continue to suffer. Despite these daunting times, businesses have shown the grit and creativity that defines how our city will recover by essentially reinventing themselves. Figure out how to serve customers with takeout, outdoor tables, and grocery services, check. Innovate new business models and specialty products, check. Discover different customers and ways to reach them, check. Seize the moment to prototype new and unusual opportunities, check. The spirit of these businesses, many of them now hanging on by their fingertips at a fraction of their capacity, epitomizes how the community will survive, revitalize, and rebuild. Against all odds, including being one of the most nation's restrictive counties, our businesses are showing the way out of crisis. In the coming months, we're planning for a surge of entrepreneurship channeled into downtown storefronts. In our role as a placemaking organization, SJDA is committed to directly supporting business, both existing and prospective tenants, and working with landlords on leasing and activations. We also know our leadership in this task includes encouraging our public sector partners to act swiftly and adopt the same can-do spirit as the small business ecosystem they're always claiming they want to help. Like most of our members, the San Jose Downtown Association reacted swiftly to the shelter in place orders back in March. We canceled music in the park and downtown ice, enacted workforce reductions and braced for the uncertainty. It was evident our community needed us to be present, strong and responsive. At first, it was triaging ever-changing pandemic protocols and keeping downtown clean and safe. The groundwork staff was deemed essential workers and never took a day off, cleaning street furniture, sidewalks, and disinfecting touch points throughout downtown. After the civil unrest at the end of May, our organization collaborated with citizens and local artists in the cleanup and healing of our downtown with social justice murals and fundraising that provided grants to small businesses damaged during the protests. In July, after the city approved its alfresco program to allow outdoor dining in public places, the association vaulted 
into implementation mode, helping close San Pedro Street, Post Street, add parklets and sofa, expand capacity on the Paseo and encourage patio cafes throughout the downtown on sidewalks and in parking lots. Building consensus and facilitating the conversion of public space for commercial use has not been easy, but it has been a difference maker for some businesses on the verge of going under. Now it's become the proof of concept to rethink our downtown streets, emphasizing their use for people over vehicles where it makes sense in our compact commercial districts. As we convert streets during the COVID emergency, let us go further with our urbanism tactics and begin planning permanent closures where we add pop-up parks, winterization amenities, stage activations, and add beautiful landscape. We deservedly promote San Jose's great weather. Now is the time to leverage our climate and make downtown a fabulous year-round indoor-outdoor experience. As the months clicked by in this uncharted purgatory, we saw our savvy members reinvent their business models and knew we had to do the same. Over the summer, thanks to a grant from the Knight Foundation, SJDA created a two-year strategic plan to guide our organization in downtown recovery to the other side of the pandemic. Our stabilization plan released on August 14th is our roadmap for revitalization. While acknowledging the anxiety of constant change these past seven months has left us exhausted and reeling from profound socioeconomic and emotional impacts, we do see a light at the end of the tunnel for downtown and it is still shining bright. As an organization that primarily represents business and property owners, we must remain focused and expect to be held accountable to our goals. The stabilization plan <clears throat> defines three priorities rooted in deep feedback from members in the greater downtown community. The three goals are small business support, social equity, and the overwhelming top objective, maintaining a clean and safe downtown. Two tactics will drive the success of this top priority. The beloved Groundworks program is funded through the Property-Based Improvement District, or PBIT, which is an assessment on real property downtown. The PBIT is set to expire in 2022 and needs to be renewed. Over the next year, our organization will engage extensively with property owners and stakeholders to determine services, boundaries, and costs for the district. Here is our collective chance to reevaluate levels of cleanliness, lighting, horticulture, and security, and reimagine together what public space management looks like for the next decade. The second tactic involves how we address homelessness. The overriding concern around keeping downtown clean and safe is connected to the growing impacts from our homeless population, especially disruptive street behaviors. In San Jose, the prevalence of homeless is more noticeable than ever because of the pandemic, the unresponsiveness of police to low level crime and citywide pause on encampment abatement. And we hear it almost daily from our members in the community at large. While SJDA proudly supports efforts to provide permanent supportive housing and all types of housing downtown, we also know from extensive experience through our Groundworks program, there are many unhoused individuals that refuse services, some because they suffer from mental illness, addiction, or other behavioral problems. Over the years, we have seen the service-resistant homeless population grow despite the dramatically increased resources to the local homeless industrial complex funded by the county, city, foundations, and private donors. Our stabilization plan calls for coordinated, consistent, and proactive mental health outreach in the downtown. Just like our successful workforce development program where homeless individuals train with Groundworks and then are hired to good living wage jobs, we have to get more involved with street outreach services. We think the county's mobile crisis response team is a step in the right direction, but we don't want to wait until someone is in crisis. 
accosting passers-by, screaming uncontrollably, destroying property, openly doing drugs on the sidewalk. Waiting until someone is in crisis too often ends in tragedy. And I don't want to see more of our homeless population perish on the streets, like what happened in the doorway next to our office last year. We are encouraged that Governor Newsom recently signed a bill expanding assisted outpatient treatment. It looks like the County of Santa Clara has added the services required to begin AOT, and we may finally see this tool used in our downtown. We have long been an advocate for a conservatorship option for those in danger of harming themselves or others, and want to work with the county behavioral health staff to apply this treatment to the most vulnerable on our streets, which we firmly believe will help both the individual and the community. Small business support is the second priority in our stabilization plan. The storefront economy has borne the brunt of this pandemic and its economic disruption as evidenced by the number of businesses already lost. This portfolio is the DNA of San Jose Downtown Association. We were founded when light rail and transit mall construction caused many businesses to close in the 80s. Assisting small business is a meaningful way is easy to say, hard to do. Every politician calls these street level proprietors the heart and soul of the city, but few know how to really help them. This is high touch work. Each business is unique and has different needs to be communicated with, assisted, promoted. Working to get a new business open and helping an existing one stay afloat are skills SJDA possesses and offers. Business support is the most rewarding part of our jobs. There's nothing more inspirational than working alongside these entrepreneurs, many of them BIPOC, millennial and Gen Z owners, representing the future of downtown, opening their dream business with a line around the block, something we recently celebrated cutting the ribbon for the Nirvana Soul Cafe in SoFi. The third priority in the stabilization plan involves diversity, equity, and inclusion. Our goal is for a more just, affordable, and accessible downtown. There are many aspects contained in such a goal. And as a business organization, we must be aligned with our core mission and take a stand. For starters, diversity must be reflected in downtown's business mix. From mom and pop entrepreneurs and arts groups to dive bars and world renowned tech companies. As Google unveiled details about their downtown project this week, equity and affordability are top of mind. SJDA is a champion of expanding downtown to the west, and we pushed for more than a decade to double building heights in the area to add more density. San Jose is a city that must grow up, not out. And infill development in established urban centers often comes with gentrification. We see a wonderful opportunity with Downtown West to create a model of equitable infill development that does not displace the mom and pop businesses, but sustains them. This is how the city of the future will best function and succeed. How fortunate we are to have a civic partner like Google that also understands this and has proposed a culturally rooted neighborhood that integrates offices, open space, affordable housing, cultural uses, retail, and small business accelerators, not a walled off spaceship. I have listened and learned a lot about equity since I stood before you at the last annual meeting. As a business organization, SJDA is interested in actions that bring in different thoughts and behaviors. Where we value everyone's experiences, promote social justice, and engage in the process of addressing built-in bias. Our board leadership is bursting with ideas like establishing local preference and procurement policies, measuring equity and development proposals, working to increase diverse building ownership, creating programs that inspire consumer inclusivity and generally getting more people involved in designing the downtown experience. When SJDA formed more than three decades ago, 
we saw the challenges retailers faced and built in structural equity measures, including an extra vote in our bylaws. What are the tools needed to give voice to our community today? It still makes sense to us that small business needs more help. For example, when we looked at how difficult it was for micro businesses to break into the downtown, we created the award-winning retail incubator in the city parking garage on San Pedro Square providing primarily women-owned entrepreneurs four subsidized storefronts to test their concepts in a brick and mortar location. We view San Jose's diversity as a key strength and an asset that serves to broaden downtown's economic base. We also see greater opportunities for connection. For instance, in our recent surveys, the demographic cross tabs show we are not fully reaching certain communities with SJDA programming. Our data shows we have room for improvement for how we, we engage Greater San Jose. To devote more resources to this critical effort, we advertised for a community engagement position this week. Our upcoming efforts on PBID renewal will be an excellent chance for us to deliver on these goals for a more diverse and accessible downtown. The light at the end of the tunnel is not just from the coronavirus retreating, but us returning to our lives changed, recalibrated to create a downtown better than the one we imagined at the beginning of 2020. It will be different. There's no question that the nature of work has changed. Certainly hybrid work from home options will be in place from now on and offices will forever be more flexible. There's still so much unknown the upheavals in the hospitality, entertainment, and arts sectors will likely have staying power. The pandemic has accelerated trends in society that were due for a reckoning. And hopefully the blessings from this time, the unclogged traffic, the cleaner air, and the progress in social justice will continue long after the virus has faded and our economy recovers. What remains most heartening about the state of downtown are the people, many of whom are with us this morning, committed to community, the environment, equity, and opportunity. You are the thought leaders for downtown's future. Though the crises of this tumultuous year are far from over, your enterprise, action, and service has shown we will overcome this disruption and create an even stronger downtown together. Thank you for your attention. Enjoy the rest of the meeting. And we will adjourn before 9.30, by the way. Thank you, Scott. It's always inspirational to hear you. And thank you for the call of action for all of us you know, to do better and be those thought leaders that we can change San Jose downtown. The next on the agenda is Doug Bartle, uh, our PBED board president. And before we go into his report, I would like to give some big kudos to PBID and Groundworks. With almost 30 employees, the Groundworks staff has been cleaning downtown and helping us keeping it safe and beautiful. There have been some recent promotions with uh, Chris Kendricks, I was our program director. Brian Dehart as operations supervisor, Jonathan Lopez as a shift supervisor, and all of whom have been part of Groundworks for over five years. We are very proud to, you know, to see nine of the staff have graduated from our work experience program with the Downtown Streets team. And again, big kudos to the PBID and Groundworks for the great work that they have done. Um, Doug Bartle with the PBID you know, uh, report. Jessica? Good morning, I'm Doug Bartle from Oracle, the president of the PBID board. PBID services just completed their 12th year of service. Last fiscal year started as each year does with the promise of continued momentum in downtown San Jose. Groundbreakings, sometimes even inside a building, created a sense of possibility. Our Street Life program created Love Downtown San Jose, a volunteer initiative created to engage downtowners in stewardship of public spaces. 
These fence cups were installed at the old Camber 12 location over the holiday season. In partnership with Urban Community and Wally Properties, Urban Catalyst, and are still there today. Love Downtown San Jose are also partnered with our city forest to add additional trees to our urban tree canopy while utilizing volunteer support. In March, the year changed in a way no one could anticipate. Businesses closed and we saw a few people out in downtown once shelter in place began. But Groundworks kept working and continued to keep working downtown, keeping downtown clean and safe. Last fiscal year, Groundworks provided 11,651 safety ambassador hours and 21,546 cleaning and pressure washing hours. I'll pause here as some of our Groundwork staff have a message for all of you. Hi, my name is Angelina. I'm a Groundworks employee. I'm a cleaning ambassador. I've been with the company now for three years. Uh, we've been out here since the whole shelter in place, uh, working hard to keep our downtown clean. And we hope to see you all again out here real soon. Hi, my name is William and I've been an ambassador with Groundworks for 11 months now. Myself and my fellow ambassadors continue to walk through downtown, connecting with business owners and offering our services to those individuals in need. We miss you. Groundworks is downtown San Jose open. As shelter in place orders began to change, we were able to restart pause projects and ensure our downtown flowers kept blooming. As we started to see a rhythm downtown, despite the challenges of living through a global pandemic, the United States began to see civil unrest on a scale not seen since civil rights movement. Local artists responded by painting messages of hope and social justice on boarded up windows and doors downtown. Partnering with local color allowed the PBID to be part of this cathartic artistic experience. Now more than ever, ever services to address homelessness and housing insecurity are needed. The PBIT is committed to partnering with service providers to address the needs of our vulnerable unsheltered population downtown while simultaneously assisting our members with the day-to-day -day challenges of homelessness present. Our work ex experience program with Downtown Streets team had 103 participants in the last fiscal year volunteering to clean downtown while getting job training and case management. 20 of those individuals get employment and four were housed. We will continue to refine our roles in homelessness services and advocacy over the coming year. With challenge came innovation through significant partnership with city staff, businesses and property owners and San Jose Downtown Association staff Al Fresco Dining came to downtown and it began to feel a little bit more like downtown we know. Despite the challenges of shelter in place, we have even seen businesses opening with Nirvana Soul revitalizing the former Cafe Friscati space. Our business development services are a crucial part of assisting business owners navigate the in and outs of the city and county permitting. With 110 small businesses, property owners and brokers assisted last fiscal year. Through Hella Gardens, a partnership with Local Color and additional funding from the city's Office of Economic Development, vacant storefronts throughout the core have been transformed with floral and botanical imagery created by local artists. We cannot do this work without you. My call to action for each of you is to get involved, ask questions, download the Groundworks Everywhere app. However, however you choose to engage with our work, we welcome your input. With an eye towards the future, the PBIT is beginning the renewal process for the district and have selected Progressive Urban Management Associates. Puma to help us through this process and design the next iteration of PBID services for San Jose downtown. The PBID was fortunate to end last fiscal year in a very strong position with over $100,000 in revenue from last year added to our reserves. Cleaning services via Groundworks represented a significant portion of our expenses as always 
while some of our street life and beautification projects were paused to comply with the county's shelter in place order. Each year, PBID members elect new incumbent members to serve on the 11 person board of directors. This year, we have two incumbent members elected to the board, Eric Klein from Adobe and Dan McGowan from the Fair Fairmont. Benjamin Eggie will begin his first term on January 1st, representing Essex property. And before we move into the next agenda item, I would like to recognize some of dignitaries that are joining us this morning. Council member Raul Perales, thank you. Um, DOT director John Risto, housing director Jackie Morales, council member elect Matt Mahan, downtown manager Black and Salalich, and Kelly Klein from the mayor's um, office. Thank you for joining us this morning. And if I hope I am not missing anybody, but if I did, you know, thank you for coming, just being with us this morning. Um, next in our agenda is our finance committee report. Since you just heard from our treasurer, Doug Bartle, in his PBED role, we have tapped into one of our longstanding finance committee members, Brian Bates, to deliver the financial news. Brian is a downtown resident and represents San Jose State University on the San Jose Board of Directors, where he has two titles, the Associate Vice President, Alumni and Community Engagement, and also the Executive Director of San Jose State Alumni Association. Take it away, Brian. And good morning. I'm Brian Bates, Executive Director of the San Jose State Alumni Association. I'm pleased to share a brief update on SJDA's final numbers for the 2019-20 fiscal year on behalf of the Finance Committee. This is a better report than I think many of us might have expected some months ago, but the work of the staff to manage expenses and to seek funding opportunities has realized a positive year-end balance. Last week, the Finance Committee met with the accountants from Armanino, who presented the reviewed financial statement and reached an unmodified or clean conclusion on the books. This is a testament to the good work done by the staff all year long in preparing and maintaining the records. In the spirit of many who have gone before me with these reports, we'll look at a couple pie charts. First up is the revenue. You see three sources of revenue for SJDA, including direct programs and activities, which accounted for two thirds of the revenue, while the business improvement district and city contract services combined to make the other third. In total, SJDA had just short of 3.6 million in revenue. On the expense side, 82% or 2.9 million of that revenue went direct, directly back into events, marketing, promotions, and other programs, while 18% was used for management and administration. Together, those two categories totaled 3.524 million. So the bottom line, a mixed net revenue for the year, $65,845, which is a little higher than expected for a good reason, as the entire Knight Foundation grant received last spring had to be recognized in the 1920 budget year to comply with accounting standards, even though a portion of those funds, about 32,000, will be expended this year to continue implementing the stabilization plan. Many of you are interested in the business improvement district statement. As you can see, there was a significant drop off from budget versus actual in 2019-20 due to COVID, from $770,000 down to $572,000. While this budget reflects uh, strategic investments in marketing, advertising, membership services, and downtown lights activation around the holidays, there are significant but expected reductions around the in-person events such as downtown ice and music in the park. The rebound to $700,000 is likely, over, likely overly optimistic, and we will be monitoring the budget closely throughout the year. This gives me an opportunity to conclude with a plug to help us by joining the Finance Committee. And in closing, I would like to thank uh, the staff, uh, for especially Dory, for her diligent work, and the Finance Committee for their monthly attention to the finances so that we stay on track and adjust as needed during the year. And that concludes my report. And now for the main event of our annual meeting, the two minute community committee reports. This is where you can really connect with the association and make an impact downtown. 
you're going to hear from volunteers. Some of them are business owners, property owners, um, residents who are donating their time and energy to help improve our city center. Because of our virtual format, we ask each committee representatives to make their own video, so please bear with us. Um, presenters report this morning. Each one will introduce themselves. And I really hope that you hear something in this rapid fire presentation that is interest and inspires you. You have heard a call of action from Scott, from myself, from Doug, but we really hope that you reach out to either one of us, the committee chairs, to myself, to Scott, and join a committee. Jessica, let's roll the videos. Good morning, I'm Brian Corbett with Gensler Architects. I'm a board member with the Downtown Association and I'm the chair of the Downtown Design Committee. The Downtown Design Committee is a group of architects, designers, planners, and urbanists who are advocating for design excellence in the downtown core. While we've been on hiatus for much of the year due to COVID, we've recently started to reconvene and have reviewed three key projects for the downtown area. We assess these projects based on a set of 11 criteria that we put together. And these include amongst others, massing and density, parking and access, outdoor amenity space, pedestrian scale, design and vibrancy, legacy and preservation and sustainability. I'd like to share really quickly a few of these key projects that we've reviewed. Sobrato's Market Street Towers or Block 8 will include about a half million square feet of new commercial office space on West San Carlos Street. This building is designed by Architect Tonica. Next up, we reviewed Urban Catalyst, The Mark, only a few blocks from San Jose State, this building will provide student housing, including 222 units and is designed by BDE Architects. And lastly, we reviewed Dinopolis Almaden Tower on Almaden Boulevard, which includes about 800,000 square feet of commercial office space designed by Gensler. Additionally, the committee had the opportunity to review and provide feedback on a number of the longer term developments that will be impacting San Jose in the years to come. These include meeting with the VTA and fostering partners regarding their transit-oriented community and mixed-use development at the new BART station on Santa Clara Street at the Mitchell Block. This will be a huge development for downtown in the years to come. We are also able to provide feedback on the West Side design guidelines that are still in progress for the Deerdon area. Lastly, this month our committee will reconvene and we'll be reviewing the, the projects that were recently completed or opened in the downtown area to determine if any one of them will receive the Golden Nail Award at the December meeting. Stay tuned. Hello, my name is Ramona Snyder and I'm currently serving as the board president for the San Jose Downtown Association's Foundation. The foundation is focused on enhancing the cultural, aesthetic, and educational environment of our downtown. Its primary program is the Downtown Doors, which brings the work of high school artists to utility boxes and doors throughout downtown. We continued the Downtown Doors program during COVID-19 by making it completely virtual. The program offered students a creative expression and acknowledgement during these unprecedented times. Students received Adobe software and an honorarium to pursue their creative interests and schools received honorariums for their art departments. We received a total of 98 submissions from 13 schools of which 10 artists were selected. We held our virtual ceremony to honor the students and their winning works. For the first time in our downtown door history, we invited the students to speak about the meaning behind their art pieces and played a video with their explanations during the ceremony, which I found to be very moving. The doors were installed throughout downtown to liven up buildings and street life and made downtown more inviting as it's slowly starting to reopen. I also wanted to mention that we have recently added a donate button on our foundation page. So now people can donate any amount, small or large, to help further the Downtown Doors program. I hope that you'll consider making a donation today. Thank you and have a great day. Hi, I'm David Mulvihill with O'Flaherty's Irish Pub and Five Points Cocktail Bar on San Pedro. And my name's Randy Muster from Sushi Confidential. And we're going to show you guys the new normal on San Pedro. Come join us. Let's Watch go. Us. Welcome to Sushi Confidential in downtown San Jose, San Pedro Square. We're super excited for what the city of San Jose has done for us. 
We have a beautiful street for al fresco dining. A little bit early right now, we're in between lunch and dinner, but this place fills up almost every single night. It's been great, it's been an awesome addition, and all of the community just loves coming down and sitting outside. We thought an Irish pub would look like this. It's really important time for survival of small businesses. Thank you to the city of San Jose, thank you to the downtown association for helping us make this happen. People love it, people are coming out, people are celebrating. We're getting to know our neighbors better, like Sushi Confidential, Farmers Union, District. We're in this together as a community. And this is what's keeping our businesses going. It's people coming out, eating and drinking, and enjoying the good weather we have in San Jose. Uh, everyone's enjoying it. We're so excited. Our webpage is almost done. Just a couple more weeks, we'll have that ready for San Pedro Square. And we also, we're gonna start launching a social media campaign, ready to continue marketing San Pedro Square. So hey, give us a like and help support our businesses on San Pedro. Not only do you have great businesses on San Pedro, you have luxury apartments, newly built, ready to move into. And if you're on San Pedro and you really like San Pedro and you want to book a private party, we can accommodate up to 60 people on Blanco's beautiful, brand new rooftop deck. And when you come to visit us here for Al Fresco Dining in San Pedro Square, we're right next to the six story parking garage. And not only is it a six story parking garage, but it's got 90 minutes free parking. So there's no excuse not to come down and enjoy, enjoy the outdoor al fresco in San Jose and San Pedro Square. Hi, I'm Gumby, head instructor and owner of Heroes Martial Arts in the Sofa District. I'm a member of the San Jose Downtown Association at large for the past six years, plus them some, and I'm chairman of the SOFA Committee. Now the SOFA District, which stands for South of First Street, as you know, has many great things going for it. We got our arts, we got the music, we got the dining, we got the nightlife, and of course we got the fitness. Plus, with all the new construction that's going up, or has been up right now, we're now the best destination for new residents of San Jose to call home. Now, I certainly don't have to tell you that COVID sucks, but we're resilient. We're coming back. You can dine al fresco at one of our fine restaurants. You can grab a beer or cocktail to go. Our art shows have gone virtual and our beloved sofa street fair is now going to be streamed into your house. Of course, the gyms are coming back as well. And somehow we've even seen new places open up during this pandemic, including Nirvana Soul, The Good Spot, and I'm going to butcher this even though I'm Portuguese, Pestiscos, Offshoot of Aegea, Looking forward to having meals and visiting all of those places. So I'm here to tell you, we'll be back. Stay strong, San Jose. We'll be here ready to welcome you with open arms. Hi, my name is David Buckholtz. I'm a 25 year resident of Nakeley Park and have been working downtown for the past 20 years with Colliers International Commercial Real Estate. I'm the acting chairperson of the Advocacy Committee. The Advocacy Committee is where many of the Downtown Association policies come to life and are nurtured into policy positions on all things big and small. The Advocacy Committee engages at the City Council and County Supervisor level to help influence policy through direct outreach and through policies put into action by the San Jose Downtown Association. Our goals as we set out this year were simple. One, keep Google entitlements on track for approval by year end. Maintain pro-growth policies downtown support the strong city initiative of the mayor city council form of government and fight for fee transparency such as permanent high-rise fee reduction and limit the impact of proposed commercial linkage fees then came COVID, and any hope of getting our high level goals accomplished in any meaningful way went out the window so instead we advocated for al fresco dining downtown by supporting efforts to streamline permits and rules for outdoor dining and use of the public right of way advocating for the closure of San Pedro Square, as well as Post Street, to activate the streets and help secure uh, the various businesses that have street fronts but do not have any opportunity for outdoor patios. Yes, we've weighed in on a lot of issues this year. Topics we dealt with include Prop 15 split roll, property tax, and impact on local businesses, support for Measure RR, the County Sales Tax Benefit Caltrain, Downtown West and AB 900, electronic billboards and advertising on privately owned buildings, and many other issues related to downtown. We welcome your participation and hope that you will join us on our monthly advocacy calls. 
please reach out to Nate LeBlanc to be included on in our monthly Zoom calls until such time that we can meet again in person. I hope you join me in supporting downtown. Hi, I'm Sarah Mancuso, Director for Harvest Properties, Homelessness Ad Hoc Committee member and PBID board member. The Homelessness Ad Hoc Committee is made up of SJTDA and PBID board members, as well as business owners, nonprofit staff, and residents in downtown San Jose. The committee's goals are to use advocacy, education, and partnership to mitigate the impact of homelessness for downtown business and property owners, residents, visitors, and unhoused individuals. The impacts of homelessness include the overall health and well being of all San Jose residents, a lack of adequate shelter and services, the overall cleanliness of public and private spaces, and the perception of safety in downtown. This committee helps shape SJDA's role in homelessness services and advocacy on related issues. The global pandemic, pandemic we are in has underscored the need to act to provide the right services for our unhoused residents. Downtown San Jose is fortunate to have dedicated outreach staff and PATH has been able to provide vital services to many of our unhoused residents. But many of our most vulnerable unhoused individuals are still sleeping on our streets. They need more intensive services than currently available and may need the services to come directly to them. The county's mobile crisis response team is a welcome addition to the services available, but we need more than crisis response services. We need proactive services ensuring individuals do not fall into crisis. Downtown San Jose needs mental health care workers in the field, conducting outreach, responding to requests for services from the public, coordinating services with other relevant service providers, and evaluating the needs of our most vulnerable individuals five days a week. If you feel passionate about changing the lives of unhoused individuals in downtown and want to create a downtown that is welcoming and safe for all, consider joining the Homelessness Ad Hoc Committee. Contact Chloe Ship on SJDA staff for more information. Hello, I'm Julie Garcia, General Manager for J. Paul Company and Commercial Property Owners and Managers Committee member. The Commercial Property Owners and Managers Committee focuses on topics relevant to managing commercial space in downtown, construction, public safety, cleanliness, and downtown trends. More importantly, this committee provides property managers and owners with a forum for sharing ideas, addressing concerns, and creating solutions. With many of our buildings vacant or near vacant due to shelter in place guidelines, we are managing our public and private spaces in new ways. If you are interested in joining our committee or have ideas for meeting topics, please reach out to Chloe Ship, the Operations Manager for Downtown Association. Our next meeting is Wednesday, October 14th at 2 p.m. via Zoom. Check the SJDA website for more information and stay safe. My name is Eric Nielsen from 55 South. We are a craft cocktail bar and new American restaurant. We are located at First Street and Post Street in downtown San Jose in the Historic District. A little bit of background on the Historic District. It begins at Market Street and runs east to 2nd and from St. John running south to San Fernando. The Historic District Committee is in the process of creating projects, promotions, and special events to help enhance the business in our district. Some recent developer activity this year includes projects being built out at Fountain Alley and the Bank of Italy building by the Urban Community, and also the development of 1 North 1st Street by J. Paul Developments. We've also had nine new businesses go online this year, most recently with Pizza Flora and Paper Moon Cafe. With the assistance of the Downtown Association and the City, we were allowed to close down Post Street for alfresco dining. We at 55 South have found 2020 to be a shipwreck of a year. So we decided what better way than to demonstrate that than with building a literal shipwreck in the middle of the street. The Alfresco program has been working wonderfully for us and our neighbors. We have since been joined by Labyrinth, Don Pedro's, Max Club, and Splash. Some other businesses open to visit are Good Karma, Angelou's, City Fish, Picasso's, Mescal, Rookies, Cream, Tea Alley, Angel's Cleaners, Acapulco Jewelry, Page Boy Hair Salon, and Groove Scooters. 
the entire district is hopefully on the upswing, and with the support of the Downtown Association and the City of San Jose, we hope to grow and flourish throughout the rest of the year. Hey, good morning. It's uh, Henry Cord here for the uh, two-minute report on the Downtown Parking Board. I am the Downtown Association rep on the board and current chairperson. The mission of the parking board is to create and maintain a downtown public park parking system that provides available and accessible parking. Unfortunately, the last six months have, have not been any highlights. Uh, for the period between March and August, free parking was provided for all parking lots, garages, and on street meters. Uh, as part of the recovery effort downtown. Most frontline operation staff were furloughed during this period. As you would expect, uh, the revenue has plummeted. Pre-COVID revenue was 1.7 million a month prior to uh, the pandemic and currently at $600,000 as of August. Now all parking operations and parking fees are back in effect. Some activities by the board, uh, the council approved replacing the validation program with a free 90 minute um, parking for visitors. The downtown merchant program was also replaced with a universal program for employees earning less than $20 an hour. In September, the council approved the parking citation delinquent amnesty program. For capital improvements, the parking access and revenue control systems has been completed for all garages. The new parking command center at the Forts and San Fernando garage will be completed this month and replacement of the parking guidance signage at 13 locations is underway. Lastly, I'd like to thank the fellow board members Harvard Song, Tamika Rass, Charlie Foss, and Wolfgang Schneider, as well as the city staff led by Arian Colleen. So have a great day. I think I'm supposed to put this up. Thank you much. Hi, I'm Julie Matsushima, and I'm a downtown resident, San Jose Downtown Association board member, and St. James Park Advisory Committee member. The St. James Park Advisory Committee focuses on park safety, activation, and the future of St. James Park. While activations may be paused for the park due to shelter-in-place guidelines, the committee is still quite busy. Project Open Doors has been providing uh, an alternative feeding site for individuals and groups looking to provide food for the hungry. This program has funding through October 31st of this year. The capital improvements to St. James Park have continued through the environmental review process with the EIR report going forward before the Historic Landmarks Commission on October 7th and City Council on October 20th. The Friends of Love at San Jose continue to be an integral part of these capital improvements and are working toward a more cost-effective plan for the amphitheater. Operations and main maintenance continue while PRNS staff plan for the future. With PRNS staff working on tree trimming and landscaping, Groundworks continues to provide supplementary, supplementary cleaning services to the park. If you are interested in learning more about St. James Park, please reach, reach out to myself or to Chloe Ship on San Jose Downtown Association staff. 
Thank you. I love those videos. Thank you, everybody. Um, and it looks like I did forget somebody I want to recognize one of the dignitaries that are joining us this morning. So um, Jim Orbel, uh, Deputy City Manager, thank you for joining us this morning. And next, I would like to introduce the Director of Operations for Symphony Silicon Valley and board member Nick Nichols to announce the election of board members. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Very good. Uh, it's my great pleasure to be able to announce the um, results of the election for the San Jose Downtown Association Board of Directors. Now, each year, approximately one third of the Board of Director seats are up for election at our annual meeting. Directors are permitted to serve two consecutive three year terms. Uh, board of Director meetings were contacted via email and encouraged to submit their votes electronically this year via SurveyMonkey. Uh, to show our appreciation for those who uh, did submit their uh, votes via that, uh, we had a drawing. And let me announce the uh, three names who were drawn and will receive some gifts. First, Mark Joseph Pena of Pacific Motor Inn. Ashley Peroy of Urban Community and Garrett Herbert of Deloitte. Each one of these individuals will receive a $25 dining certificate and $10 in downtown San Jose Farmers Market carrot cash. So thank you for voting and uh, congratulations. Now to the results of the election. The following 12 directors have been elected to serve a three-year term on the San Jose Downtown Association Board of Directors beginning January 1st, 2021. First, the incumbent members. Brianna Gilbert, downtown resident. Katia McLean, Steinberg and Hart. Chris Neal, the core companies. Jeannie Serpa, Republic Services and Elizabeth Tron Lee's Sandwiches. As for the board elect members, we have Dap Ashialu from Nirvana Soul, Angie Hellstrip Alvarez from Makla, Daniel Marsh, Hogue Fenton, Han Mo, downtown resident, Eric Nielsen, 55 South and SP2, Emily, Ruval Acaba, Bridge Bank, and Thoy Trin from The Good Spot. Congratulations to you all, and thank you for serving on our board of directors. We're almost there, we're wrapping it up. So thank you, Nick. And if you wanna keep up with the downtown San Jose, follow us on social media. I see some hashtags on the, on the chat, so, um, please follow us, but come dine, grab some coffee, do some takeout at downtown, we are open. And also don't forget that we have our year in review 2020 meeting on December 11th and a presentation that is always super exciting with some great photos and I'm sure that we're gonna have even more um, fun you know, in December than what we had today. So thank you everybody and see you uh, soon.